You have over 100,000 inmates here in Florida now, which is the highest ever. And uh, what does it look like? And that looks like 90 something percent male and approximately 50 percent African American. And from that perspective, uh, looking at the educational attainment where you had the, the, the average was less than a sixth grade education. And with African American males, it was below that. So just looking at the numbers, 46% uh, of them had prior commitments, so they had been there before. So uh, we can't say that we're doing an effective job of incarcerating. We're incarcerating more Floridians now than we did four or five years ago, but are we safer? The resounding evidence by data, it doesn't look like we're any safer. And then looking at the issue of if it's the case that African-American males make up 8% of the population that are eligible to go to prison, and they're roughly 45, 46% of the prison population, it seems to me that with a $2 billion correction budget, it would be a lot cheaper and I think more pragmatic for us to make sure we provided the service to them in front end, but you don't see that, whether you're looking at juvenile justice programs or prevention or drug treatment programs, you don't tend to see African-American males. And I think that if we were to address those issues that get them, that we'll strengthen the whole system, because I think some of the issues that they face are issues that others face, but for some reason, they're more likely to penetrate further into the system. For instance, they had an article or editorial the St. Pete Times on Dozier about the treatment of kids, and everyone just you know think that that's it's awful for kids to be mis mistreated, but those kids, uh, you know, the number of sustainable uh, incidents of investigation about kids being mistreated in the juvenile justice facility have gone down over the years. But I, by the same token, I don't think that journalists or, or the public is as outraged that the Department of Juvenile Justice spends almost 40% of its deep end services on African American males, but you don't send, see those kids in prevention. I think that that should be more of an outrage, or at least on the same part of talking about the, the maltreatment of kids and the, the, the very little and low number of, of incidents that we have sustained on, on males. It's more of expectation. You expect to see when you go to prison and juvenile facility, you expect to see little black boys there. So I, I think that, that we, and not, on, uh, not only state, local, federal government, uh, not only, but I think the black community ha has, has see the picture of, of black boys as that. So I think that although you'll find a lot of folk that will champion gender specific girls issues, champion other issues, but you won't see anybody champion the issue of, of, the, of the kids that we see coming in and out of the system the most which are young black boys. So there's just no champion there. For me, it's personal because I have an eight-year-old and a 15-month-old. So when I go into these facilities and I see little boys, they look like my boys. So it hits me in a, in a different moment. And I also know that when my boys leave my home, that they look just like this for the society and, and, and everybody else. They don't know that, that their dad is a doctor and that he'll you know, go through a brick wall to make sure that they achieve and that they expect to, to, to achieve and, and, and perform at a higher level, educationally as well as, as citizens. In a state where you know, you're talking about the graduation rate for black boys is less than 50%, if that was any other group, there would be some outrage.